This video is all about the atom and some of its basic properties that you need to know for your A-level course. This video is about the atom and some of its basic properties that you need to know for your A-level course. Here's a schematic diagram of the atom. Um, in the middle, I'm sure you're familiar that there are positively charged protons and neutral neutrons, which make up the nucleus of the atom. And around the nucleus, in their shells, in their energy levels, are the electrons. And they orbit around in various shells. And all um, when you take all the, the atom into account, it's electrically neutral. Um, so there are equal number of protons to electrons. In terms of the dimensions of the atom, the size of the atom is really quite tiny indeed. 10 to the minus 10 meters is a good approximation for the size of the atom. You may have heard the term angstrom, which is an atomic scale length unit, and an atom is approximately one angstrom in diameter. So an, an angstrom is a capital A with a circle on the top like that. So one angstrom is equal to 10 to the minus 10 meters, but this is the number in standard form. The nucleus is extremely tiny, much, much, much smaller than the atom itself. Um, and a good estimate for the size, whoops, for the size of the nucleus is 10 to the minus 14 meters. So the nucleus is about 10,000 times smaller than the atom itself. So there's a lot of space. This diagram is obviously not to scale. The nucleus is extremely tiny. Uh, in fact, there is more space in an atom than there is in the solar system which gives you a, a bit of an idea about the scale of things uh, in, within you know, atomic measurements. The charge, the elementary charge, is the same as the electron charge, which you've probably heard of from AS, um, and that is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The proton has the same charge as the electron in terms of its magnitude. The only difference is that the proton charge is positive and the electron charge is negative. The density of the nucleus is very high. Um, you can use the formula density equals mass over volume if you know the mass of the nucleus and its approximate volume based on this radius. And when you do a calculation like that, you end up with a number around about 10 to the 17 kilograms per cubic meter. The nucleus is one of the densest things in nature. Okay, so those are some of the numbers. Here are some definitions for uh, atoms and, and nuclei. Uh, isotopes, I'm sure you've heard of before from GCSE or maybe from chemistry. An isotope is something which is, um, of, uh, atoms of the same element are called isotopes. The reason that isotopes differ is because they have a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. The proton number is the same because they're the same element but the number of neutrons can differ, and that makes two atoms with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons isotopes of that element, i.e. it has a different mass number. A nucleon is the general name for a particle found in the nucleus. So there are only two nucleons, there are protons and there are neutrons. So it's a bit like boys and girls both being children. Protons and neutrons are both nucleons. And a nuclide is defined as a specifically stated combination of protons and neutrons, so a specific isotope of a, of a particular element. So carbon-12 is a nuclide, uh, and obviously that has six protons and it has six neutrons. All right, so that, that, there's a carbon-12 nuclide, which is the nucleus of a carbon-12 isotope. Again, something quite familiar to you, hopefully. This is the way we denote atoms. So here, X is the actual element itself. And X could be anything. Over here, it's uranium. Z is what we call the proton number. Up here is the mass number, or as a more physics term, rather than the chemistry term, we tend to call it the nucleon number. And as we've just seen, a nucleon is a proton or a neutron, so when you add them all together, you get the nucleon number, rather than the mass number. So we're gonna call this one the proton number, and we're gonna call this one the nucleon number. So over here, we have 
um, the atomic notation for uranium 238. So this is the number of protons and this is the number of protons plus neutrons. So if you want to get the number of neutrons, you have to take 92 away from 238 to give you um, the number of neutrons. Over here, we have the symbol for the element, which in this case is uranium. Okay, there are many forces. In fact, all the forces of nature act within the nucleus. Some are more dominant than others. Uh, so let's have a look at those. Obviously, um, one of the bigger forces in the nucleus is the electrostatic force. Okay, so that's a repulsive force within the nucleus because um, all the protons are positively charged and the neutrons are neutral. There are no negative charges. The charges are all alike and therefore you're going to get a repulsive force. Um, it's quite strong because the electrostatic force um, at these sorts of distances becomes extremely strong indeed. Um, it's repulsive and its range is technically infinite. Um, so we'll write that there. Uh, but it decreases quite strongly it's a, a, you know, with distance. So as the protons separate from each other, the electrostatic force would, would die off quite quickly. But within the nucleus, it's quite a strong repulsive force. Obviously, these particles have got mass, so the gravitational force um, will act, but it's extremely weak in comparison. I mean, it's something like 10 to the 30 times weaker than the electrostatic force. Um, and so, uh, and obviously that's an attractive force. The, the gravitational force isn't what holds the nucleus together um, because it's extremely weak compared to the electrostatic force. So if these were the only two forces acting within the nucleus, it would just tear itself apart. The protons would repel each other and the nucleus would be destroyed. Um, just fill this in. The range of the gravitational force is also um, infinite. Okay, right. There are other forces within the nucleus and this next one is the one that actually binds the nucleus together and it's called the strong force. It's called the strong force because it's extremely strong. It's much, much stronger than either of these two forces. Um, in fact, between two protons, the strong nuclear force has a value of about 99,000 newtons. That's, you know, nearly 100,000 newtons holding these two tiny particles together. Uh, and the strength of that is what gives the nucleus its, 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 um, its binding, its, its strength to hold it together. Oddly, the, the interaction is both attractive and repulsive with the strong force, um, but the one that counts at the moment is the fact that it's attractive. So it, it holds the things together. Um, the range of the strong nuclear force is very uh, short range. It only acts over very small distances. And if you could get these protons apart, it dies off almost immediately. So in order to bind a nucleus, when we look at fusion, you'll see that in order to get two uh, nucleons together, you have to get them into extremely close proximity to each other in order to, for the strong force to kick in and the nuclei to, uh, the, you, you know, the, the, um, the nucleons to fuse together. There's one other force in the nucleus, and that's called the weak nuclear force. Um, that's quite weak, obviously, so I'm actually going to write weak here again. Whoops weak. Um, this is the one that's responsible for beta decay. So I'm just going to write here beta decay rather than whether it's attractive or repulsive. It has the ability to change the uh, the flavor of quarks which we'll look at in another video um, and therefore cause electrons and things to be to be given off from the nucleus. Uh, and I'm just going to leave out its range there because um, that's not really relevant to uh, to the weak force. Okay, so these forces are all acting. The reason that a nucleus holds together is not because of the gravitational force. The electrostatic force pulling it apart is much, much stronger. The reason it stays together is because 
both of these are completely swamped by the strong nuclear force, which is what holds the nucleons in place within the nucleus. And the weak nuclear force is the sort of odd one out here, and that's responsible for, um, for protons turning into neutrons and neutrons turning into protons. Okay, so those are the properties of the nucleus uh, that you need to know. Thanks very much.